Hey guys, welcome back. I'm excited to start on this new series of videos I'll be doing about digital nations and blockchain. And you know what? What if you could tell exactly who is going to be the top five cryptos a year from now? Or what about five years from now? Or a decade from now? What would you give to get this knowledge? There's an idea I've had in my head for a while now. You know, the saying, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. I think this is an overarching theme right now on this channel. When I first started this channel, I started with the past industrial revolutions, and now I'm moving forward and diving deep into the history of nations and how we can use that knowledge and apply it to blockchain. Sounds interesting? Well, join me for the next few minutes to understand how. But before I begin, all of you new guys who joined the last uh, two weeks, welcome aboard. Um, if you like what I do, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out a lot. And I'm not just saying this because every YouTuber says it, it actually really helps a lot. Uh, this number has been going down slowly and now it's 84.4%. I think last week it was 847 So thank you all you new guys, welcome aboard and let's continue with the video. So in this video, I will be using the great Spanish empire and Bitcoin as an example. And what I'm explaining in this video is how are blockchains the new digital nations. Um, I'll be doing more videos on this topic, but this video is just to begin mapping blockchain characteristics onto real world nations or taking real world nations characteristics and mapping it back onto blockchain. Once mapped, we can then go through the histories of uh, interesting empires and analyze that knowledge to make better predictions on blockchain. Um, of course, this won't be exact, but it will give us a better fundamental understanding of how things could play out. So for example, um, if we know what led to the rise of the Spanish empire, then if we look for patterns that uh, happened in Bitcoin, which are similar to what happened in the rise of the Spanish empire, then we could say that yes, Bitcoin is going to rise more. So I think this idea is better communicated through an example. So let's continue. So what does the great Spanish empire have in common with Bitcoin? Well, the Spanish empire has a common ideal. The Spanish Empire was mainly Catholic, very strong Catholic, and they fought many various wars to spread Catholicism throughout the world. They were also very strongly into mercantilism, which means going off creating colonies and then trading goods back into the main uh, empire's territory from the colonies. Uh, so that's the main ideal within the Spanish empire. When you compare it to Bitcoin, what's the, what's the main ideal in Bitcoin? So in Bitcoin, people want to have a monetary system free of centralized control. People in Bitcoin want to control their own money and they believe that uh, Bitcoin is a good store of value. Now, these are not obviously the same things. A store of value is not the same as Catholicism. But what I'm trying to explain is that the Spanish Empire and Bitcoin, they both have an ideal. The people in both uh, Spanish Empire and Bitcoin, they have a common ideal. That's what I'm trying to explain. Secondly, they all they both have common languages. So in the Spanish Empire, of course, the language was Spanish. In Bitcoin, the common language was was C++, which was the uh, which was how Bitcoin was originally programmed. So, what again here? What I'm trying to say is that both the Spanish Empire and Bitcoin have a common language. Moving on. So, what's the consensus mechanism for the Spanish Empire? So, for the Spanish Empire, it was Spanish policies. Um, they also were, of course, very strong into Catholicism. So it, it sort of informed a lot of the decisions they would make. And you could call that a consensus mechanism, right? Because it's how does a group of people come to a consensus of what to do about some thing? So, so those are uh, expressed in the Spanish policies and also Catholicism. For, for Bitcoin... Obviously, we all know that the consensus mechanism of Bitcoin is proof of work. So again, here, what I'm trying to say is I know they're not the same thing, 
But what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to compare a blockchain to a nation and they obviously both have consensus mechanisms, um, you know, which is, which is what I think. Then moving on, the Spanish Empire has borders. So they've got numerous territories, colonies. They've uh, obviously all of Spain, parts of Italy, North Africa. They expanded to even the Americas. When we look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin, although it doesn't have a physical, you know, delineated territory as per se, people who run nodes or server hardware, uh, which obviously the Bitcoin miners operate, those nodes are located somewhere on the earth, right? So most of it, I believe now is, I, I think it used to be mostly in China, but now they've moved out. And what I'm trying to say here is that the territories of Bitcoin is the hardware of the nodes, because if the hardware of the nodes is on Bitcoin, it's not being used for other protocols, right? So that that's a, that's the sort of the general idea of how I think about borders. So they both have borders. They also both have the ability to defend their borders. So with the Spanish Empire, they had a pretty advanced army and advanced weapons at the time. I think they had access to gunpowder. They were uh, pretty intricate sort of formations within the army. And that's what actually led to their uh, great expansion of the empire. Um, so they have the ability to defend the borders. And what about Bitcoin? How do they, how does Bitcoin defend its borders or nodes? Well, to defend against fraudulent transactions, we obviously have the Bitcoin miners who provide the security through the hardware, through cryptography, right? So that, that is one way of how Bitcoin protects itself. Also, so the next thing is, how does it maintain order? So, so with the Spanish Empire, it's the police, it's the church, it's the local government, uh, you know, it's the local, you know, the people, the explorers who came to the Americas, it was whoever was the captain was at that time. It's the monarchy as well, right? But within Bitcoin, how it maintains order is through the code. Whatever is written as code, that is the law, right? That is the it, it, the code enforces itself onto itself. Whoever is in Bitcoin has to follow the code. Whatever is written must be followed. The Spanish Empire has access to a lot of resources. They had arid and rich lands in uh, in Italy, they had the mines in America. They were mining like crazy amounts of silver in America. They had access to financing from rich families uh, in Italy. I think the, they're called the, the Fuggers and the Gionese bankers. So they have resources. What about Bitcoin? What's the resources of Bitcoin? Well, the resource, resources of Bitcoin is the electricity, right? The, the internet connection, the hardware, the, the hash rate, the, the RAM, the CPU, the power that is running the entire Bitcoin network, that is the, the building blocks of, of that, of the power of the hash rate, the actual hardware, the, the internet connection, the people running the, the hardware, those are the resources of Bitcoin. Okay, so let's move on. So the transport infrastructure. So in the Spanish empire, there's ships, there's horses, there are rivers which have been made uh, navigable. So there's bridges. There's they've they've sort of cleared the 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 river banks away so that boats can sail through them. There's uh, roads. What's the transport infrastructure for Bitcoin? Well, the transport infrastructure would be the layer one, for example, uh, uh, the tr the transactional layer on layer one. There's also layer two, which is the Lightning Network, right? So that that's almost in a way it's a transport infrastructure. Then let's move on. We got the currency. The currency of the Spanish Empire is gold and silver. The the currency of Bitcoin is BTC, right? Okay. And then let's move on. So also all all blockchains and nations, the people who are in them, they work to create some net positive economic activity. For example, in the Spanish Empire, there was a shipping industry, there was clothing, there was armament industries, manufacturing guns, gunpowder, uh, there was mercantilism. So there's a lot of trading going on between uh, different nations within the nation itself, between the colonies, lots of trading going on between merchants. 
uh, you know, there was a lot of farming, foodstuffs, agriculture. Uh, what about Bitcoin? What's the what's the net positive activity of Bitcoin? Well, for Bitcoin, the, the activity is coming from being a store of value, right? People see that Bitcoin may be a more uh, ideal store of value for them than gold. They're preferring it over gold now. Um, you know, not everyone, but, you know, people who prefer the properties of Bitcoin over gold. And then they both have competition as well. So the competition of the Spanish Empire was, was France, Netherlands, England. There was endless wars going on along all the territories. What about Bitcoin? Obviously, Bitcoin competition is pretty much every. <laughs> You know, everyone wants to be the next Bitcoin. So the competition is, is, you know, I would say Ethereum, XRP, just, you know, everyone is trying to become the next Bitcoin to, to get the top spot, to be the top, uh, you know, to be the big boy in the market, I guess. So, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm not trying to say it's exact. So when I was comparing things just now, again, I keep, I know I keep saying this, but I'm trying to explain the idea that both blockchains and digital nations have these same characteristics. They're not exactly, I know they're not exactly the same, but what I'm I'm saying is they both have them. And if we can identify what led to, for example, the rise of the Spanish empire, what factors was it the, I don't know, was it the transport infrastructure? Was it because they had more resources? Was it because they expanded their borders? How can we take that knowledge and put it back onto blockchain? So yeah, so so that was the main idea. Um, I'm, I'm slowly getting into it, um, but I think um, I'm just super excited to see what we'll find. So for the next video, the next video we'll look into the rise and the fall of the Spanish Empire and then see what it can tell us about the fall and rise of Bitcoin or the rise and fall of Bitcoin. So yeah, so that's the end of the video guys. Thanks again for joining me, all of you. I don't know who you are again. Um, maybe I think we probably need to get to know each other a bit more, um, but I appreciate all of you. If you like what I do, Again, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps out a lot. Um, you know, I just love doing this and I, I'm just so happy that there's people listening to me. I'm just some guy in London, just, you know, literally just recording this in my flat. So thank all of you and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.